Today we're going to teach you how to properly play doublings. Stay tuned. Hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about subscribing to the channel, liking the video, and sharing with any other pipers in your life. I also give Skype lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. There's a link in the description below to the PDF I have right here. It's a four-page document about how to play your doublings properly. Go ahead, download that, put it on a tablet, print it out, have it in front of you so you can follow along. The doubling. It is a critically important part of the music we make on the Highland bagpipe, and yet so many pipers, even ones that are pretty good, sometimes struggle with this very basic movement, and while it's basic, that doesn't mean it's easy. One of the things that makes the doubling so difficult is that it has to be timed kind of, well, perfectly. It's got one specific timing, and today, with this exercise, we're going to help you figure out what that timing is and get it under your fingers. We use doublings to create further emphasis on a note. Just a single grace note will give you a certain amount of emphasis, but if you want more than that, you're going to have to use an embellishment of some sort, and one of the most common is the doubling. Music played on an instrument, say, like a practice chanter or a clarinet or a saxophone, typically has four parts to it. The first part is the pitch. You can change how high or low the sound of the note is. The second thing you can do in melodic music is change the rhythm, how long or short you're holding a note compared to the tempo. The third thing you can typically do is rest or pause between notes to either play notes of the same pitch or to give some room for either other instruments to play or let the, the melody breathe. And then finally there's dynamics, making one note louder than another so that it is more important. We don't want every note to just have the same amount of emphasis or it gets kind of boring. But on this stick right here, and even more so on the pipes, there's only two things we can really do. We can change our pitch and we can change our rhythm. So we can change the tone and we can change the time. We have to create the illusion of separation and emphasis using grace notes. And the doubling incorporates both of those things. We're going to use a G grace note to emphasize the landing of the note. To emphasize it yet further, we're going to create the illusion of separation by using another grace note to separate the note into two parts. That is why it's called the doubling. The two grace notes allow the doubling of the melody note to occur. I think some people get maybe confused and think it's a doubling because there's two grace notes. The grace notes are there to allow you to hear the melody note twice. But one of the problems, especially on the Highland Pipes, is that the grace notes themselves, these lifting grace notes, are quieter than the melody notes we're playing. The volume of the pipe channer is such that the bottom note is loud and the top note's relatively quiet comparatively. So low G, loud, high A, quiet. G grace note, D grace note, E grace note, these are all going to be quieter than the melody notes we're hitting underneath. Why does this matter? Because if you overlap those grace notes, if you go, say, from A to a C doubling and you don't allow the C to be heard between the two grace notes, not only are you not creating emphasis, you're actually doing the opposite because the G grace note and D grace note are both quieter than the melody note. And if you don't allow that melody note to occur between them, well, you've kind of ruined the illusion, if you will. You have done the opposite of emphasizing the note because you've actually created a small break in volume rather than something emphatic. It's now something kind of quiet. So the first thing you need to be able to do before we do any of this is make sure that you can get your note changes down cleanly and clearly with G grace notes. I have a previous video. It'll be linked up here about how to do all of the note changes with grace notes. So if you don't have that down yet, that's just fine. Go check that video out. Get that skill under control before we dive into this one right here. Not trying to show off, but I did want to say real quick that the doublings I'm playing in this video are purposely a little bit more open, even when I'm demonstrating them at full speed. And it's not to speak down to anybody at all. I wanted to make it clear that the speed of the doublings that I'm playing is completely acceptable and the first step to building them to a much quicker tempo. This is an episode of the Basic Series. If you needed help getting your doublings a little bit quicker, I have another video up here that might be right up your alley that can help you really speed up your doublings and get them to the level you need them to be at. This, however, is for those just learning them, and I hope you find it useful. So you can see here in the PDF that, again, is provided in the description below that we're starting with C doublings. And yet, the first thing is just two notes, and they're both separated with G grace notes. Why is this? 
because I want you to start listening to the two C's occurring. And there's no better way to make sure that you're not overlapping your grace notes than to, well, use the same grace note because you can't overlap the same grace note. So for that first C doubling in line one, we're gonna do two G's in a row. Dum, dum. And you can see it's half of a beat to a beat and a half. I have my metronome set here at 75. This is the Tempo app by Frozen Ape. I really don't care what metronome you use. There's a ton of great ones out there. This is the one I'm using today. Soundbrenner is another one. So just have a metronome. I have this set at 75, and I'm going to take a look at just the first two bars. So we're gonna use two G grace notes to separate that C. We're then gonna use a G grace note to emphasize the first C and a D grace note to separate the second C. In the next bar, we're gonna use two D grace notes this time. So again, by not being able to overlap the notes, because you can't overlap the same finger, you're gonna be able to kind of force yourself to hear that separation. And then again, we're gonna reinforce the proper pattern of the G grace note and the D grace note, because yes, in the C doubling, B doubling, low A doubling, and low G doubling, all of these are gonna be separated with a G grace note and a D grace note, at least in their normal use, anything from low G up to F. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go ahead, play the first two bars of this with the metronome and the grace noting that is shown. And all four of those, the two G grace notes, the G and the D, the two Ds, and then again, the G and the D, all four of those should have the same timing. Bum, 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 bum. But you can hear, those are pretty open, but that's starting to build your skill. If you can't play them slow, open, and clean like that, you're really gonna have a struggle to play them well more quickly. So when you have those first two bars down, you're ready to move on to bar three. Now bar three looks substantially different, but you can see the grace noting is the same, but now the C that was before an eighth note now is written as a grace note in the middle of the embellishment. I'm here to tell you right now that that C is not a grace note. I call this a sounding tone. I've used that term in other videos before. And what I mean by a sounding tone is that it's a real note that happens to be kind of quick and written like a grace note, but it is longer than the G grace notes on either side. This is a shorthand to make things easier to read, but it doesn't mean that it's timed the way it's written. There are other methods that could have been used to write this out and make it more clean and clear. They weren't used. This is kind of what we're stuck with, so this is what we're gonna go with. And then finally, before I play it, it's important to note that it's button, 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 that we want the doubling starting on the beat. That G grace note should land on the beat right with the click of the metronome and your foot, and not before, it's not baton, baton, that would be the D grace note or the second grace note in one of these landing on the beat. Again, we don't want that. We want the downbeat to be the G grace note and then the embellishment, the two C's happen on the beat and after, not before or across. So let's give that third bar a try. I'm gonna go ahead and slow the metronome down to about 68 here to make sure that we can hear everything that needs to be done. Speed is not your friend here. You wanna make sure these are good, clean, and accurate. Fast will come later and with doublings, again, as I've said, too fast can be a problem. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. And we're looking to have all four of them with the same timing. As quickly as you can get these two together is as quickly as you can get these two together. We don't want and the I call that the Highland twiddle. We don't want twiddles, we want doublings. Da -da, da -da, button, button, two sounds, two C's, two notes properly spaced and timed. Let's move on to B's. So just like the C before, this is gonna use a G grace note to emphasize the first note and a D grace note ultimately to separate. But for our exercise here, we're first gonna start with two G grace notes so that we're not overlapping them. Then we're gonna do the proper G grace note and D grace note that we'll use in the real embellishment. We'll then do two D grace notes because again, we can't overlap those and it gets that finger a little bit more exercise, which is good. And then finally, we're gonna do again, one more proper one with a G grace note and a D grace note. Now let's do just bar three. And again, hopefully you're hearing that that G grace note's landing on the beat. 
and that when it's two G grace notes, two D grace notes, or a G grace note and a D grace note, the timing of all of those should be exactly the same. Button, 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 button. Again, we're not wanting. If you hear that, that means you're not creating that illusion. You're not hearing the note between. That's the most important part of a doubling. And for the beginner in particular, it's better to have them spread apart where you can really hear that middle grace note, that sounding tone, than to have it be so quick that they're overlapping and actually creating a break in your tone rather than causing more emphasis. So we've done the C doubling and the B doubling. I want you to know that the low A doubling and the low G doubling would be played exactly the same way. It's a G grace note and ultimately a D grace note to separate those. They're not included in today's exercise because they're far less common, not that they don't occur, but the same techniques can be used to play those. You can make your own exercises up if you need to, if you have tunes that have low G and low A doublings in them. But I wanted to move on to the top hand doublings, the ones that use non D grace notes to separate their notes. So the D doubling. For the D doubling, ultimately it's going to be a G grace note to emphasize the note and an E grace note to separate the note. We can't separate with this. Well, you can. That's a light D strike. That's something totally different because even though this was the finger we just used for the D grace note, when we're lowering it, you can see it's actually going to tap out a quick C, and that's not what we're wanting in a lifting or opening doubling like this. So instead, the lowest available grace note is going to be the E. So for this exercise, we're going to again start with two Gs to get the idea of the proper timing of the embellishment. Then we're going to do it with the proper overall fingering, which is the G grace note and an E grace note. And then just to practice that E grace note a little bit more, we're going to do two E grace notes and then go back and forth between a G grace note and an E grace note again. Let's try those first two bars where it's nice and open. Keep it clean. Now let's move on to bar three with the D doubling. And again, we're gonna start with two Gs, then the proper G and E grace note, then two E grace notes, and then again, another one with the proper G and E grace note so that we can, well, just get our fingers working, get it in the right time. And remember, put the metronome wherever you need to. If 68's too fast, that's fine. Or if you need to give them each two beats, do that as well. Make this exercise work for you so that your doublings are working. Let's get to it. Now, E doublings, probably the most common embellishment on the pipes, if you ask me. I don't think anyone's actually done a survey, but the E doubling is used for E's all over the place. There's a lot of other embellishments that could exist for E and don't, not in any uh, real capacity, however. So we're gonna play lots of E doublings. So this is one in particular to look out for. And because the two fingers, the G and ultimately the F grace note that we'll be using to separate it are right next to each other, it's really easy for this one to become a Highland twiddle. Let's not have that, let's keep it clean. Let's make sure that again, we're gonna start with the two Gs to hear the proper timing, then go between the G and the F, and don't let them overlap. And then two Fs, and then finally again, another G and an F. Let's give it a go. And then again, we're gonna do it at full speed in bar three, one doubling per beat, two Gs, a G and an F two Fs, and then a G and an F grace note again. That one's worth taking your time on. Again, set the metronome where you need to, work it through, make sure it's clean and not. And finally, the F doubling. We've been basing much of the exercise today on the fingering of the F doubling. And the reason for that is in the F doubling, you have two G grace notes. That's our only option. We're on an F and that's the finger we have available. We're, we're gonna have A grace notes eventually. That's gonna be when we're playing doublings and other things off of a high G. We'll worry about that later. That's not for today. For the F, we're on an F. These fingers are passive. That one's not gonna do anything. Not enough to separate the note. So we're going to go ahead and do two G grace notes. So this one's gonna be the same thing over and over and over again. But because the F doubling has two G grace notes, you can't overlap them. And so the speed at which you can play the F doubling is kind of the speed in which you can play all of your doublings. You want to have your playing be internally consistent. I can't really overstate how important that is. You might be able to really play an incredibly fast and accurate C doubling, but if it's followed by an F doubling that you can't play as quickly as a C doubling, the 
mismatch, the unbalance between those two things is going to be pretty clear and pretty obvious. And it's not going to sound like the kind of pipe music I think you're wanting to make. So you have two options. You can open your C or you can speed up your F or you can try to do both. But in the meantime, you need to try to make sure that your C doubling and your F doubling sound the same. So with all of these that we've gone down, we've done two G grace notes on all of them. That's effectively an F doubling on each note we've been playing. So if you learn how to play your doublings this way, you're going to be internally consistent with your own playing. Plus it's gonna give you a lot of extra time with that F doubling to try to speed it up with those two G grace notes that hopefully you can get it a little bit quicker. But at the end of the day, you can only move your fingers as fast as you can move your fingers. You'll be able to slowly get them to be moving quicker and quicker, but it takes time and there's an end point for each of us at the level of dexterity we're gonna be able to get to. And by testing it with this F doubling, you always kind of have this internal barometer, this internal metronome that you can hear and balance all of the rest of your playing against. All right, let's try these F doublings. First two bars. And then bar three. All of these will be the same. One doubling per beat. So that's a great test to see where you're at with your overall dexterity with your F doubling. And again, why we're using it to kind of inform the rest of our doublings. Now we get into some actual note changes. Everything we just did was just establishing kind of the fingers we're going to use and building up the dexterity and hopefully the knowledge in our head about what we're doing. Now we're going to apply it to the actual scale. Not the most exciting thing perhaps. And this time we're only gonna go between the two G grace notes and then the properly fingered doubling. And your goal again is to make sure that both sound the same. Let's give it a try. I'm at 72 beats per minute right now. Repetition legitimizes, so I'm going to say it one more time. You want all of these doublings sounding the same, whether you're doing the two G grace notes, which again is not a proper doubling, helping your ear build the timing, and then the one with, in this case, the G grace note and the D grace note should sound the same, have the same timing. Record yourself doing it. Play it back. Do they sound the same? Does one sound more open than the other? What can you do in your playing to make sure that they do sound the same? Hold yourself to a higher standard. At the end of the day, you're gonna be your harshest critic, not other people. Hold yourself to a high standard. Get your doublings good and clean. I know you want to. You wouldn't be watching this video if you didn't. Okay, let's do that with bees. For this video and this exercise, you see I don't have low G and low A. They're not terribly common, but you see how these scales are built. If you wanna practice those, go ahead and put them in there. It's just walking a scale down. I'm starting on an F to whatever the doubling is. So you could build that if you want for your own practice if you need it. All right, we're gonna move on to E doublings. So again, we're gonna do two G grace notes and then a G grace note and an F grace note, the proper E doubling. Make sure both sound the same or as close to it as you can do. and changes with D-doubling. And then finally, the F-doubling. I chose to make this one just one time through each note on the scale because, well, you're gonna be doing the same grace note in this doubling anyways. So this one's a little shorter, but you're still getting all the note changes down and you're getting them in the proper timing too. Just make sure you get a close close and not just a quick twiddle, but wah, wah. let's try it.
And then finally, to just wrap this up, kind of a scalic exercise, this would be a great thing to maybe build up into a warm up if you're getting your doublings under control. It's relatively melodic. I won't say it's quite a tune, but it's a little prettier than some of the scales we just did with these. Let's give it a try. <laughs> And if that is feeling good and under control, maybe even try it at twice the speed, where those would be basically dotted eighths to sixteenths and quarter notes, like this. That's actually just kind of fun. Well, there you go, everybody. There are some exercises that I think can really help you get your doublings under control. If you're already playing tunes with doublings in them and you know they're a little messy, use some of these techniques in the tune itself. Let's say you got Scott on the Brave going already. That tune in most settings has 19 C doublings in it. And if you're going, open them up. Maybe try playing with two G grace notes. Whoa, that's kind of tricky. Dit, dit, button, open them up, hear the two C's, don't let them overlap. And keep the grace notes crispy. It's not by ya. It's they're, they're quick motions. I'm not squeezing too hard, I'm just not lifting very high. But I am making sure that that downward motion is nice and crispy. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something out of this video, think about giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. It helps more than you know. If you wanted to go the extra mile, you could join my Patreon, where as little as a dollar a month goes a really long way to helping support the channel. And you'll see names scrolling right now of some fine folks that are helping to contribute to the support of this channel. And I would love to add your name to the list of fine folks there. I now also have some merchandise from my Command Your Bagpipe line. I have shirts and everything else. Go check it out. There's a link in the description below. And again, it really helps support the channel. If you want a more personalized instruction, I do give Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.mattpiper.com or email me at the email you see here, and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the world, and I'd love to work with you soon. Well, thanks again for watching, everybody. Again, I'm Matt Willis, and until next time, cheers. Cheers.